So is there any better feeling in golf than hitting that absolutely pure iron shot from the fairway, where you feel like the golf ball has been squeezed on the club face, it comes off with loads of speed and flies through the air exactly as you imagined it. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in this particular video. We're gonna show you exactly what you need to do with impact in order to compress your iron shots like the best players do. So back at the Forest of Arden and I can barely feel my hands because it is absolutely freezing this morning. It's about 8 a.m. in the morning. It's probably about zero to one degree, but we're talking about compression. And if I hit a shot now, I really need to strike this well because if I don't, it's gonna hurt my hands quite a bit. So compression with your iron shots, it's something that we're all after. And if you've ever hit that perfect golf shot with a perfect strike, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We feel like the ball is squashed on the club face and it's the sensation of feel we're all searching for. So in this particular video, you're going to learn about exactly what needs to happen at impact in terms of the attack angle and in terms of what we call the dynamic loft. And you're going to learn and understand how to perform a little drill which is going to help you achieve those things. Ultimately, it's going to give you more ball speed, better quality of strikes and more distance with those iron clubs. Just before we do that, if you're not a subscriber, it is absolutely free and I'd love you to be part of the community we have here. So go ahead into the description box down below, click that link and also hit the little bell icon as well, which means you'll be notified each time I do upload a video. So let's go through exactly what needs to happen at impact in order to compress these iron shots. I've got a six iron here, but this would pretty much work or apply with any golf that we're hitting from the ground. So lots of golfers are unfortunately under the impression because they've been given that poor information that hitting down on the golf ball, i.e. taking a divot, will give you that compression on the golf ball. And that is absolutely not true. You can hit a golf shot with no divot and get huge amounts of compression and get the ball flight and the sensations that the best players in the world get. So in order to understand what gives us compression, we need to go through those two things. So when I hit my golf shot, my golf club is going to have an attack angle. It's going to be traveling downwards towards the ground, away from the ground or level with the ground. So let's say I have a golf club which is traveling level with the ground. So zero. And let's say, for argument's sake, this has them, but let's say this club has got 30 degrees of loft when I make contact with the golf ball. So we call that dynamic loft. So there's my 30 degrees. Now the difference between those two arrows is what's going to relate to my compression. So you can see here that that gap is 30 degrees. My club is traveling at zero and the club had 30 degrees of loft. So if I have the club traveling at zero, but this time the club's actually got, let's say, 40 degrees of loft, that's a greater gap between those two arrows, that ball would have less compression. That would feel less good. If I was to get the handle forwards and this club had 20 degrees of loft, this would give me more compression because I'm narrowing the gap between those two arrows. The more we can narrow the gap, the more effectively what we do is we reduce what we call the spin loft. If we can reduce the spin loft, we get that compression. That ball squashes on the face more than it would if that gap was wider. So what you can see there with those demonstrations is that on none of those demonstrations did I suggest that the club was traveling downwards towards the ground because it doesn't have to. Creating good compression is all about narrowing the gap between the dynamic loft and the attack angle. So I could have a golfer where they get the golf club like this, they swing very much down into the ground, but the loft points very high and they get very, very little compression. Yet they might be taking huge divots after the golf ball. And the sensations they might communicate that with is it doesn't feel particularly good off the face. I'm not getting particularly good distance. I'm not getting the flight I want. I'm not getting the strike that I want. Yet I'm hitting down on the golf ball. So hitting down very often happens in good golf shots, but it's not the key element of compression. So how are we actually going to get you to work on this compression element? Well, what we're looking to do, as we've said there, is looking to deal off the golf, which all the best golfers do, and we're looking to rehearse a motion where the club is actually quite shallow, because that's narrowing that gap. So if we deal off the golf club, we would get a ball flight which is very low. So we can visually see if that's the case. If I'm not hitting down on the golf ball, I won't be taking a divot. And again, that's something visually we can see. So the little exercise here to work on improving your compression is actually to take a starting position with a mid iron, a six iron is fine. And I'm gonna try and hit a golf shot where I deliver the golf club with the handle as far forwards as I can, which is going to reduce the loft to give me that very low ball flight. But I'm gonna try and do that without taking a divot. And if I can get that low ball flight and no divot, that suggests to me and tells me that I've achieved those things that we spoke about at the start of the video. 
So let's go ahead and see if we can do this. Got my little setup. Now for me, I like to do this as a little rehearsal. So I put the club in position and then I'm just gonna go ahead and rehearse what I feel like my impact is going to be. And then I feel from there much more comfortable being able to achieve that. Now you can see from the down the line camera there, that was a nice low ball flight, took off quite low. And you can see that potentially I've just removed a tiny bit of turf there, but not really anything significant. So that shot there tells me that my attack angle was fairly level. So my club was traveling relatively level to the ground, but I had the handle forwards creating that ball flight. So what I did, exactly what I wanted to do is I narrowed the gap between those two angles and that gives me that compression. So that's obviously not gone particularly far. I'm not expecting to hit that full speed, but it's a great little exercise for me to start to develop the impact that I need to get that compression. The best players in the world, the people that you see on TV, the best players at your club generally will compress the ball more than the high handicappers. That's how they do it. They deal off the golf club and they have a relatively shallow approach to the golf ball and that's exactly how you're going to do it. So let's one little exercise that you can do which is going to help you to compress your iron shots. So like I said at the start, if you can get that compression, your strike improves, your distance improves, your control over the flight improves. So many good things happen when we can start to appreciate what has to what's needed at impact in order to get that strike. And again, divot, but relatively shallow divot. Ball flight was nice, that ball felt great on the club face, that's the compression that I'm after. So if you feel like your ball striker needs a bit of help, try that little exercise, narrow those two arrows, and that's gonna help you get that all elusive strike that you're after. Thanks for watching, usual stuff is down below. Really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you know someone who you think could benefit from this video, please share this with them. I'd really appreciate that. And also that subscribe link down there and the one in the corner if you're not already a subscriber. Thanks for watching. We'll hopefully see you back here again soon.